Now let's examine our unique transcoding architecture in more detail and in particular the benefits it gives us in deploying high definition CCTV systems successfully. So when we're recording the emphasis really is on quality. We want to ensure that we're recording all of the cameras all of the time and we must maintain evidential admissibility in, by providing uh, quality of image. Also we will be wanting to record for prolonged durations, often maybe several months. And so for this application the requirement demands that we take our multiple camera sources, be they analog, IP and megapixel and record them alongside each other seamlessly. In this application in high bitrate MPEG-4 but it could equally well be JPEG. For transmission then the emphasis is going to be on immediacy. We want to, to see the, uh, incidents as they happen on demand and very often we'll be dealing with low bandwidth connections but still be the, we want the ability to be able to maintain fast update rates. So in this case our image sources will be transcoded into a low bitrate MPEG-4 to be viewed on our viewing client but note there that we also want that to be capable of being achieved live or recorded. So in that case what we would need to do is take the images from our mass storage device as high bitrate MPEG-4 and transcode those down also down to a low bitrate MPEG-4 to make sure that we maintain the speed of update and fluidity of movement both for live or for playback. For archiving purposes then we need the evidential integrity, we want to be able to have digitally signed images for, for again to, to be able to demonstrate that images haven't been tampered with, we want to be able to interrogate those images remotely and in this particular case it isn't important for us to be able to download in real time but it does give us the ability to store images indefinitely by having uh, near infinite capacity of, uh, of disk storage. So in that case we could take our high bitrate MPEG-4s or JPEG images and, and transcode those through unaltered down to our local reviewing, uh, reviewing client. We could also deal with mobile viewing so we can actually take our high bitrate either live or stored images transcode those out so that we can actually supply uh, possibly QCIF images or, um, or, or CIF images to our uh, mobile viewing clients and we can do all of those streams simultaneously. So a point I made very early on in the presentation was it's important to be able to generate multiple streams that suit the connectivity between the server and the client. And so that makes that is even more important when we're dealing with megapixel images with uh, two or more megabits per second uh, to be able to transmit those over low bandwidth connections at reasonable update rates. So that shows how transcoding is a vital element in the successful deployment of CCTV systems using high definition cameras. So now let's just take a few moments to reflect on the use of PCs in a security environment and uh, obviously the security of the PCs themselves is of paramount importance. Um, where it's very well documented the, uh, the level of threat to which they are subject, uh, the list of uh, malware, viruses, spyware, trojans uh, is ever present and it needs constant vigilance and maintenance and that's adding cost. So in terms of a security check checklist then uh, with an embedded operating system then uh, a lot of these issues don't actually come across to us but uh, the need to maintain firewalls, passwords, uh, anti-malware software generally uh, needs to be maintained and uh, let's not forget um, uh, system software upgrade patches and uh, any problems that they might introduce uh, it's certainly not unknown for that to be the case. So these are all issues that uh, come about with the use of uh, PCs um, in security applications. So let's just uh, summarise and come to some conclusions about H.264. Then it's important for us to, re to recognise what profiles are actually being applied in the solution that's being offered to us. 
uh, in terms of H.264 then uh, we have the option of baseline main and the extended profiles as well of course so to get a true comparison and ideal about what kind of bandwidth we're actually going to be able to achieve uh, for real that we need to be aware of that most systems actually uh, as we've seen in CCTV applications are limited to baseline and just remember that's about a 20 to 30 percent reduction compared with MPEG-4 part 2 um, and it does cost an awful lot of uh, processing power in order to be able to achieve that preventing us from doing many other things uh, higher order profiles would give us higher com uh, higher complexity, higher compression, uh, but at the cost of higher latency uh, and higher encoding and decoding costs. And remember, of course, that H.264 is not a guarantee of performance by any means. It's certainly down to individual implementations. Compression it certainly is important. We would never deny that compression is important, but it certainly isn't the be-all and end-all and fractional reductions in bandwidth are going to achieve very little it's far more effective at managing network bandwidth to be able to segregate our large-scale camera data store that at edge of network and then bring out client data to satisfy the needs of user either live or playback by transcoding being, being able to seamlessly integrate IP alongside analog and high definition cameras is a means by which we can provide users with truly usable solutions and also using embedded solutions with dedicated hardware and software can give us much higher levels of performance and security and reliability than would ever be possible with a PC based solution. So I'd just like to thank you all for your attention. Uh, if you do have any questions, then I'm sure we'd be delighted to, uh, to deal with those. Just forward them through to ourselves. And uh, thank you very much.